Willie B's automotive how-to. Willie B, back at you with another automotive how-to. Today I'm going to show you how to kind of check an oxygen sensor, the technical way, the right way to do it. Um, if you have maybe a gas mileage problem or a code for an oxygen sensor staying lean, staying rich, not fl not frequently, um, not fluctuating frequently, uh, they get lazy. Best way to do it, you can do it either with a, a DVM, digital voltmeter, or you can do it with an oscilloscope, which is the best way. I'm going to show you both methods, just kind of a real quick overview of how to kind of pinpoint an oxygen sensor problem. <clears throat> this will especially help you on an OBD2 vehicle where the computers are so picky at the O2 waveform that they see and use for fuel trim control. So, um, all right. All right. Today, our test car is a 93 Honda Civic, one and a half liter. This is a pre OBD2 vehicle, obviously, so it, it doesn't have any monitoring O2 sensors. It's, well, a downstream is what it's called. This is the O2 on this car. All right. Now, the wire you're going to want to probe into, or back probe, I recommend, a, I recommend back probing through the harness connector. It just keeps you from damaging any wires. Of course, I did probe this one because I'm going to go ahead and replace it, so it doesn't really matter. But you want to find the signal wire to the computer from the oxygen sensor. This is a four-wire one. So you need to, might have to pull up a wiring diagram, whatever. If it's a one-wire oxygen sensor, well, you only got one option. And then you want to ground, ground somewhere. All right, yeah, just ground anywhere. Got that hooked up. Right now I've got it hooked up to my oscilloscope. Today my oscilloscope is the Master Tech. It does a pretty good job. As you can see, this oscilloscope, or hopefully you can see it, it pretty much shows me a one voltage frame here. That's all oxygen sensors operate off of. Um, so you only need a one volt frame in here, uh, which is a thousand millivolts. Um, now, don't be confused with air fuel ratio sensors or a lambda sensor. If you have one of those sensors, do not pay any attention to this. They do test a bit differently. Um, a lot of your new Toyotas and stuff have air fuel ratio sensors. They're commonly mistakenly called an oxygen sensor. They work a little bit different, like I said. Don't pay any attention to this. <clears throat> all right, now you want to do this on a warm engine. Make sure you warm the engine up. Hook all your wiring up and everything. All right, now I've got to fire it up. Now what you're going to want to do is look over here. And you can see the oxygen sensor waveform. This one does not look very good. It's pretty lazy, not moving around a whole lot at idle. Now, I'm going to come up to about 2,000 RPM. You can start seeing a waveform. Should rain fairly smoothly and quickly. Should go from almost 0 volts to 1 volt. This one is not. It's a little bit in between. Now, next thing I'll show you is a snap test, which is pretty important. What you want to do is you're going to wide open throttle it. And watch what happens on you. You should see it jump up and then down. You should see it go down very quickly and bottom out here almost zero volts and then come back up and start ranging again. Because, of course, Zero volt, the closer it is to zero volts, the leaner it is. The closer it is to one volt, the richer it is. So of course when you crack open the throttle plate, it goes lean immediately. So you should see that and it should respond quickly. That one didn't respond so quickly. But it's working. Just a little bit lazy. Now, to perform the same thing, 
on a digital voltmeter. You want to turn it to your direct current setting. Hook it up the exact same way. Your positive to your signal wire from your oxygen sensor. Find your ground. Alright, now you're going to see the same thing. You just don't have a waveform, all you have is just digits. But, it's not, I mean, it's, it's still just as accurate, it's just harder to read, especially when you get one that's doing some weird stuff or, you know, but this, this method does work if you don't have an oscilloscope. But you can do the same thing, you can do your um, snap test. There it goes. Pretty sweet. Now I find that this oxygen sensor is lazy. So I'm going to go ahead and put a new one in it. Now I want to talk about oxygen sensors. Okay, Honda. Hondas are very picky, guys. You put a cheap O2 sensor in it, you're going to get cheap results probably won't fix anything actually. Don't use a universal where you have to make the cut the wires and do all the wiring and everything by direct fit. Denso happens to be who makes Honda oxygen sensors. Quality sensor. So I'm gonna replace it with this. Um, also I just recommend you're either going to the manufacturer and buying their oxygen sensor, go to the dealership or whatever or at least research and see who makes it and buy buy from that company. Do not buy Bosch oxygen sensors. They're junk out of the box. Don't even, don't worry about it. But yeah, and they're cheap. And that's why they're cheap. So, get you a good oxygen sensor.